Okay, we're going to talk about stakeholders, which is chapter two. Okay, we're going to be talking about stakeholders in insurance companies, stakeholders in benefit schemes, information about the client, and we're going to talk a little bit about the different types of advice and decisions actors can give. Okay. So the stakeholders in insurance company. Just want to spend a little bit of time here talking about what advice you'd give to each of these. Because you know, in many cases, the advice given to a client by an actuary will impact on other stakeholders. The actuary needs to consider the interest of all stakeholders and not only those who seek and pay for the advice. So, for example, policyholders, you know, the actuary might give them advice on personal protection against death and illness protection of property and give them some investment advice. Um, who else, you know, might they give a little bit of chat to? Oh yeah, for shareholders, they'll tell them, you know, how they can obtain a good return on the investment and if it commensurates with their risk. Creditors, they'll talk about what's the certainty that they'll get their money back. And yeah, but, um, and like regulators, they look to see if the requirements are actually being met. But I just want to talk a little bit more about uh, the advice they'd give managers and employers. Okay, they'd give advice on you know the running costs. Are they meeting legislation uh, provisions for benefits? You know to attract and retain the right staff. Protection, uh, you know, against financial loss from sickness or death, and protection of the tangible and intangible assets. And also some advice on the quantification of future surplus capital and the investment of surplus capital. When it comes to the board of directors, again, is legislation being met? You know, how can we invest our assets? Are we managing our liabilities? What are the provisions that need to be set up? What price to set, um, you know, ensuring that policies are actually being paid? Are we meeting the expectation of our policyholders and our shareholders while at the same time achieving good corporate governance? And what are our reinsurance requirements? For auditors, you know, in a life insurance company, that give them advice on the long-term liabilities, and for general insurance, that give them advice on assessing long, long tail claim reserves. Um, and then, yeah, you've got this pretty much the same happens for a benefit scheme. You know, so for members of the benefit scheme and their dependents, they actually give advice on provisions of benefits on future events such as death, retirement, illness. And withdrawal and you know for like the trustees he'll tell them how to manage the assets of the scheme how to pay the benefits profit uh, benefits promised under the scheme as they fall due how to maintain solvency um, and if we just look at you know the sponsor you know advice on how to protect provide protection against retirement and benefits that meet the the needs of the members how to deal with surplus and deficit, managing the costs of providing benefits, and again, meeting legislation requirements. So you can see a few of them overlap. Uh, government, you know, advice on how to fund and monitoring the funding of benefit provisions, and setting legislation and how to monitor those legislation that impacts financial contracts and are people actually adhering to it. Okay, then for sources of information on the client, you can get information from published account, from the press, from meeting the guys in a formal, informal situation, so you can just learn the culture, and there's always lots of information on the client's website. And the sources of information will tell you what's the risk appetite and what are the objectives of your client. When it comes to advice, there's three types. You know, you can give indicative, which is just your opinion. Uh, you can get factual where you just do a little bit of research like, oh, what's the legislation regarding this? And then there's the recommendation where you do the research, you do models, you do forecasts, you know, you do the whole charades. And as you can see, the more work involved as you go down that list. Okay, so factors to consider when giving actuarial advice but the client decides. Okay, what are the alternatives and the implications and whether you recommend the alternatives? The assumptions you made and why you did that, be aware of who the client is, you know, will they understand what position do they have to change it, so just think of that. 
Um, you want to always avoid conflicts of interest, and you must be humble enough to decide whether um, you need other professionals to come help you. Like when do you need to turn to the accountant or the lawyer, and whether they should be involved in giving advice. And yeah, when you're giving advice, an example would be like on the bonus rates uh, of a with profit policy, you know, the discretionary stuff. The board of directors make the final decision. But when it comes to like surrender values of a life policy, you're actually making the decision. Now, when you're giving advice and you're responsible for the decision, then it's good to seek further advice or to get a peer to review your work. And yeah, that's everything we have in this chapter. It's quite a lot of theory. I've just brushed through it. Um, all the best for studying. Cheers.